In 1955, the Joint Study of Arterial Facilities recommended the route of an expressway which was to serve Staten Island. Overseen by Robert Moses, the powerful arterial coordinator of New York City, the Cross Richmond Express Highway, named the Clove Lakes Expressway, was to carry passenger and commercial service from the Gothels Bridge to the proposed Narrows Crossing. Ultimately, the Staten Island Expressway would cost $41 million and five years to construct. 400 buildings were demolished, and over 3,000 residents were displaced. The expressway coincided with the opening of the Verrazano Bridge, as well as the Willowbrook Expressway. Costing $14 million and only two years to construct, the Willowbrook Expressway links the Bayonne Bridge to the Staten Island Expressway. It was renamed in 1990 as the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Expressway. Originally, plans called for the roadway to extend further south of the Staten Island Expressway to Great Kills on the island's south shore as a passenger-only parkway, yet environmental and local opposition forced these plans to be abandoned. The city still owns the right-of-way of this tract of land, and it has since become part of the Staten Island Greenbelt. In 1976, the West Shore Expressway was completed, linking the Outer Bridge Crossing with the Staten Island Expressway and points north. It runs over the Fresh Kills and Richmond Creek. Despite years of delay and postponement, the route was established, yet this was to be the last expressway constructed on Staten Island. That same decade, the Richmond Parkway was also constructed. Opened in 1972, it traverses the southern half of the island along the route of the former Drum Ghoul Boulevard. Originally, the parkway was to carry passengers from the Outer Bridge Crossing to the Staten Island Expressway, yet local opposition halted its continuance further north through the Green Belt. Less than half of the original parkway stands completed as it abruptly ends at Richmond Avenue, at the center of the island. Ramps were constructed at the Staten Island Expressway to link it with the Richmond Parkway, yet the ramps to nowhere stand unused as a testament to an abandoned era. In 1997, the roadway was renamed the Korean War Veterans Memorial Parkway. Another roadway is less known. Emulating the Belt Parkway in Brooklyn, the shorefront drive was to carry passenger traffic from the Conference House in Tottenville along the South Shore to the Verrazano Bridge. Yet these plans too never came to fruition, and they remain an obscure footnote in the history of the island. On the island's east shore lie South Beach and Midland Beach. The Dutch first settled on the beaches in the 1600s, wherein they established Oudorp, or Old Town. In the 19th century, the potential for beach and seaside recreation was realized. By the early 20th century, the beaches served as popular resorts and summer homes. The area boomed until fires, pollution and the Great Depression diminished the attractiveness of the area and depressed crowd attendance. South Beach was the last stop on the South Beach Rail Line. It was discontinued, however, in 1953. The beaches are served by an extensive boardwalk, which runs the length of the beach. Towering in the backdrop is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. While in the distance, toward Midland Beach, is the newly built fishing pier. Adjacent to South Beach is Miller Air Field. Completed in 1921, Miller Field is named after pilot James Miller, 
who died in World War I. When completed, it was the only coastal defense air station on the East Coast. In 1960, the field was the site of an infamous collision between a United Airlines Douglas DC-8 and a Transworld Airlines Lockheed Super Constellation. In the worst aviation disaster at that time, 128 people aboard the two planes died, and another six on the ground in Brooklyn were killed. A young boy who had survived the initial crash died the following day. Miller Field closed in 1969, and it became part of the Gateway Recreational Park. Opened in 1948 as a temporary solution to New York City's refuse, the Fresh Kills Landfill operated for half a century and would ultimately become the largest man-made structure on Earth, exceeding the Great Wall of China. At 4.6 square miles in area, it is 25 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty. After it closed in March 2001, it opened temporarily to process much of the debris from the September 11th attacks. In 2003, preliminary plans to convert the landfill into a park began, and it's expected to take up to three decades to complete. If successful, the park will be three times the size of Central Park. Deriving from the Dutch word kloven, meaning cleft, Clove Lakes Park was created by glacial movement and the damming of various brooks and rivers. In 1683, Governor Thomas Dungan owned some of the land and built several dams across the Clove Brook. A latter owner of the property, Abraham Britton, built a dam at the end of Britton's Pond in 1825. The subsequent body of water became Clove Lake. Three other ponds have since been dammed, Brooks Pond, Martling's Pond, and the now dried up Shonian's Pond. At 198 acres, it became a park in the 1920s, and construction on its infrastructure began in the 1930s. Silver Lake Park lies adjacent to Clove Lakes Park. It is 209 acres in area. Known originally as Fresh Pond, it began to be called Silver Lake in or about 1860. In 1913, the lake was drained and converted into a reservoir. It was used for potable water until 1971, when underground storage tanks were built. Today, it is part of the drainage system for the tanks. On the island's north shore, along the Richmond Terrace, lies Sailor's Snug Harbor. Opened in 1883, it was a home for retired sailors. Robert Randall, the site's benefactor, specified the area be for the aged, decrepit, and worn-out sailors. After the number of residents dropped below 200 in the 1950s and 60s, the area was on the verge of being raised in place of new homes. In 1976, New York City purchased the area and designated it an historic landmark. Known at an earlier time as Saginus Creek and later as the Little North River, Lemon Creek empties into Prince's Bay. The derivation of the name is unknown, but it came into usage sometime at the turn of the last century. Home to swans, ducks, and migratory birds, Lemon Creek Park is 105 acres in area. It was established in 1962, with additional acres added to the park in subsequent years. Wolf's Pond Park is situated in Huguenot, near Lemon Creek Park. Natural erosions and winds dammed an inlet, forming the pond. The desirable location attracted many prominent Staten Island families, such as the Wolf family for whom the pond is named. In the mid-19th century, Wolf's farm was acquired and used as a quarantine, but local fishermen feared its impact on the water and burned it down. The station was relocated to Tompkinsville. The park itself was acquired and established in the 1920s and 30s with protection provided for the freshwater pond. 
Situated in Annadale, Blue Heron Park is named for the predatory Blue Heron Fowl. Relative to the other parks, Blue Heron is new. Acquired between 1974 and 2001, the park contains six ponds, including Blue Heron Pond and Spring Pond, as well as walking trails and preservation habitat. At 260 acres, Clay Pit Ponds Park comprises woodlands, ponds, and wetlands. Many species of birds, up to 170, as well as other animals, including snakes, toads, frogs, and turtles, have all made the park their habitat. The sites used for extensive mining of white cowlin clay gave way to natural ponds, springs, and vegetation after they were abandoned. The park was created in 1976 after extensive efforts were made to preserve the clay pits and their natural ecological growth. The largest green space on Staten Island is the Green Belt. Situated at the heart of the island, it nearly comprises of a massive 3,000 acres. There are trails, expansive wilderness, and established parks in the Green Belt. Among the parks are Willowbrook Park, Lotterette Park, and High Rock Park. Ironically, the Green Belt came into existence with overdevelopment and the construction of the various expressways. When the Richmond Parkway's construction was halted at Richmond Avenue, the remaining Greenlands became the Green Belt. A monument to this environmental victory is Moses' Mountain. Established by the excavated land brought about by the building of the expressways, and named after Robert Moses, the chief coordinator behind the expressway construction, Moses' Mountain serves today as a hiking trail within the island's natural refuge. Great Kills Park is located at Great Kills Harbor on the island's south shore. Commercial oyster harvesting boomed in the harbor for many years in the 19th century. In 1860, John Crook bought property on the peninsula and built a log cabin on the shores. In the 1930s and 40s, the city of New York acquired Crook's Point and established Great Kills Park. It has subsequently become part of the city's Gateway National Recreational Area. Today it preserves and protects the area's wildlife and nature from the sprawls of urban development.